What's Islam's first principle? Let me tell you, since I don't have chalk, I'm going to take this. Is that right? So this is Islam's first principle. Are you ready? Do we have chalk, by the way? Behind the bag. Oh, yes. Beautiful. Right. Is, can I draw on this? Can I do it? Good. So here's Islam's first principle. That's a heart, by the way. <laughs> I do apologize if it looks like an obese heart, but it's a heart, yeah? So Islam has a metaphysical view of the human being. It basically says every human being has an innate primordial state called the fitra. Coming from the Arabic word fatara, which you have words like fatron and fatarahu, meaning something has been created within us. And there's knowledge in this fitra. We're not a tabula rasa. There is proto, primary knowledge contained in your innate primordial state. That's why children smile even if they're blind. This is why we praise things all the time by virtue of their attributes, even though those attributes don't affect us in any way. We say bravo, we clap, we laugh. Because there is knowledge in the fitra of what? That God is a reality, or the creator is a reality, and he deserves praise. He deserves praise, right? This is contained in the primordial state and you see it expressed in human beings all the time whether we like it or not it's expressed in human beings the idea of causality prior causal conditions prior creative power we attribute even when we're atheists we just have god replacements oh uh, it wasn't god it was a multi-universe yeah it was the multiverse we have god replacements in our language all the time praise we praise things all the time we we stand we smile we say bravo we express a form of praise to things all the time by virtue of their attributes, right? You know, if you like, uh, if you like football, you like Ronaldo, you're like, wow, that was a wicked goal. Why? Because you praised him by virtue of his football skill, but he doesn't really benefit you in any direct way. So this is based on a prophetic, profound tradition of the Prophet Muhammad upon him be peace that can be found in the authentic narrations as narrated by Muslim, where he said that every child is born in this state, this primordial state which is acknowledgement of God and the affinity to praise. But what happens as a result of parenting, society, sins, education, etc. is that this primordial state is clouded. This primordial state is clouded. So what Islam says is that Muslim, the job of a Muslim, generally speaking, is to help people uncloud their primordial state. How can you do that? You can do it by using reason. You can do it by using love. You can do it by using questions. You can do it by basically getting people to see their experiences, negative, positive or, or spiritual in a different way. These things are not ends, they're just means to awaken the truth within. So it shines through. And this is why in our discourse as Muslims, sometimes we rely on this too much. Sometimes we don't rely on anything. And we become intellectual abstract robots thinking we can prove our tradition in some kind of robotic intellectual fashion. Here's a deductive argument. Human beings are not functional, computerized models. We're not robots. We're dynamic. And what's very interesting is, when I engage with people, when you give them reason, sometimes they'll give you a rational question that is a sign that reason is not required anymore. Like, I would give someone an amazing argument for God's existence that I think is amazing. Like, okay, I agree with you, but what was God doing for eternity before he created the universe? And I'm thinking in my head, okay, well, it's, it's a rational question, but how does that question undermine my conclusion? And if you think that is enough for you to stay on your path of disbelief, de denying the divine, then for me, it's an indicator of something else that's going on. It's got nothing to do with rationality. It's got to do with maybe psychodynamic stuff. 
How many times have I spoken to people, and this is all my limited experiences and they could be wrong. Like I started speaking about their parents and that was the main reason why they basically rejected faith. Because they had a very negative, dark, medieval understanding of a tradition and they just felt really sad. And yet, in the beginning they'll give me all of these amazing arguments against God. But then when you unravel it, then you find out it had nothing to do with that. And these are my experiences. So, the, why am I mentioning this is because Islam has its first principle as well. And, you know, sometimes we, you know, we don't, we don't have this intellectual and, and spiritual maturity to understand the human being as the human being. And sometimes we treat them as intellectual robots. Why am I saying this? Because at the end of the day, you know, we should encourage everybody when we interact with each other to have positive experiences and not just reliant upon, I'm going to prove you wrong. That's the point I'm trying to make. How many times have I seen people embrace a faith, embrace Islam, or even love Islam a little bit more? They may not be Muslim, but I appreciate it just because someone said, I don't know. Or someone said, I don't know, but I'm going to buy you a coffee. Yeah, so we have a first principle. Which makes sense of Islamic epistemology as well, because you start with knowledge. If you start with primary knowledge that God exists and He, and he deserves praise, then the whole of Islam is all about awakening that within you. It's already inside you. And if you start with primary knowledge, then you could end up with true knowledge. But if you start with nothing, then you'd always be in a state of skepticism. Anyway, there's more to it than that, but I thought I'd bring that into the discussion. It's the end of the topic. I think we can conclude that science doesn't really, hasn't killed religion, hasn't killed God, or, deny, or, or led to atheism. And one of the reasons for that is because when we study the philosophy of science, we will see that science is beautiful, but it's not what we thought it was. And it's not enough to use as a baseball bat to break down the divine and break down his revelation. So, thank you very much for listening.